This episode is brought to you by Dashlane. Try Dashlane Premium free for 30 days at dashlane.com slash infographics, and never forget another password and keep all your online accounts secure. When the young John D. Rockefeller looked up to his father as a kid, he might not have seen much to admire, but it was his pop's sketchy nature that could have been the catalyst to John becoming insanely wealthy. His father once said, I cheat my boys every chance I get. I want to make them sharp. This man who traveled around the USA selling what we might call snake oil to cure diseases was a scammer at heart and didn't always put money on the table after his long trips. For that reason, John's mother always told her son to work hard and save, and that he did, to the extent of him becoming synonymous with making money. In fact, he would become the first billionaire ever in the US, but how did he get there? John D. Rockefeller was born July 8, 1839 in New York State. His parents were William Avery Rockefeller and Eliza Davison, and his father would go by the name of Bill. Bill didn't really embrace the whole morality idea, and when he wasn't running around the country selling elixirs to cure diseases, he was seeing his many girlfriends. Young John, at the time, was brought up mostly by his mother, a devout Christian who was pretty much the polar opposite of her spouse. In fact, the father was so notorious for his shady line of work that he got the name Devil Bill. And while his pop's ability to graft in the face of adversity might have run through John's blood, it was his mother's devotion to saving money that John embraced. His father taught him how to sell something not so good and make it sound great, while his mother taught him to save that cash and invest it and turn it into more cash. This is how he became the richest person of all time if you compare what he had then to the economy at large. John was said to be good in school, but as his father was often away doing what he did, he also had to make money for his family. By the time he was 12, he had saved his first $50 from selling turkeys. The year was 1851. That might not sound like much to you, but if we look at inflation calculators, we're told that in 2019, that would be worth $1,667. Not bad for a 12-year-old. His mother then told the young man to loan that cash out, which he did to a local farmer with an interest rate of 7%. A year later, John was repaid the amount plus interest. It was then that he realized he could make a lot more cash if he was smart. He later said this about his first loan of his. The impression was gaining ground with me that it was a good thing to let the money be my servant and not make myself a slave to the money. The family moved to Ohio a couple years later and John did his schooling, performing well. He later went to college and learned such things as bookkeeping, commercial history, banking, and currency exchange. All the time, his father was explaining to him how to sell, and his mother was inculcating in him on how to be smart with the money. It's not surprising then that John's first job was as an accountant's clerk, because dealing with cash was already second nature to him. He was just 16 years old, but always dressed like an aged man in dark suits and dark ties. He impressed everyone around him, working hard and being serious. He even impressed in the debt collecting department because he always seemed to be able to get the money back to the firm. For that reason, he kept getting raises. When still in the probation period, he was paid 16 bucks for his entire three months of training, but then he was paid 31 bucks a month, which was soon raised to 50 and then 58 dollars a month, which was quite a lot of money at the time. John Rockefeller had one ambition, and that was to make a ton of cash. When still in his teens, he said his plan was to live until a very old age and also make at least $100,000. If we take it that he said that when he was 18, it was about $3 million in today's money. That is very ambitious, but John would do that and then hit the ball out of the park. He would also get his wish to live a long time, only dying when he was two years shy of a century. At age 20, he had saved $800, which today would be worth almost $25,000. He went to invest in a company, but that wasn't enough cash, so he managed to wrangle another $1,000 from his father, who must have been doing well at the time because that's over $30,000 in today's cash. His father, being the man he was, told John there would be interest on that loan to the tune of 10%. Of course, he paid his father back, because back then, it seemed every venture John went into made him money. His business partnership did well, with profits in the first year being $4,400, and in the second year being $17,000. In today's cash, that's $136,000 and $496,000. This wasn't just his, as he had those partners, but now he had cash to further invest. The Civil War then broke out, and as you know, war can make some people a lot of money. Soldiers need food and clothes and weapons, and the Union needed all sorts of supplies, which made John and his company Clark and Rockefeller a ton of money. He then got into the refined oil business, and this made him and lots of oil prospectors insane amounts of cash. 
If there was blood on John's hands, he wasn't concerned, because he was on the good side, he believed, the Unionists. And anyway, he just thought he was a moral man outsmarting others. We should say that a lot of people didn't think that way because drilling oil was messy business, it was polluting the environment. In 1865, business was booming. John and his parents were doing a better job than other oilmen, building more efficient refineries, and so able to undercut their rivals. That year, John bought out his partners for $72,500, which is over $1 million today. This was the deal that really made the man rich. Rockefeller not only made a lot of money, but he borrowed and then wisely reinvested. Just three years after he did the buyout, he created an oil refinery in New York, which at the time was the largest of its kind in the world. The Standard Oil Refinery Company would soon start buying all its competitors. What he was creating was a monopoly, and while he was accused of running all the little men out of business, he would tell himself that he was doing them a favor, as they would fail anyway. He actually called himself an angel of mercy. This so-called angel by the end of the 1870s was already incredibly rich, producing around 90% of the oil used in the USA. It's said he was worth around $26 million in today's money by the end of the decade. But he wasn't done, not by a long way. You see, oil had to be moved around. The traditional way of doing that was by train, but Rockefeller had underground pipes in mind and so got to work building them. This created fierce competition from anyone who was working in the railroad, but John prevailed. In the 1880s, Standard was accused of being too big and also having some shady business practices, but John saw it as a healthy practice even if he had monopolized the oil business. He believed business was merely a game played and the fittest survived. The New York Times didn't see it as healthy at all, stating that Standard Oil was the most cruel, impudent, pitiless, and grasping monopoly that ever fastened upon a country. At one point in that decade, Standard Oil employed over 100,000 employees, 20,000 domestic wells, 4,000 miles of pipeline, and 5,000 tank cars. He made even more cash when automobiles came onto the scene because then he began producing the gasoline for the cars. Having expanded into steel too, his businesses and wealth just kept growing. In 1902, it's written that he had made a whopping $58 million from investments which today would be over $1.7 billion. But he still wasn't done with making money. Being this rich got him a lot of attention, of course, and much of that was the negative kind. He was seen as being unscrupulous, much like his father Devil Bill. The conclusion to this in 1911 was Standard Oil being charged with antitrust practices, which means being so big, you take all the other players out of the market. After that, Standard had to be broken up into lots of small companies. You might have heard of some of the names of those smaller businesses, such as Exxon or Mobil. Before that breakup, Rockefeller of course was a main shareholder, and it's said he sold a lot of his 25% of Standard stock. After this move, it said he was worth around $900 million, which, if we put that through an inflation calculator, would be $320 billion. All this making money was said to take a toll on the health of Rockefeller, and it's said that throughout his life he suffered from bouts of anxiety and depression. He also had a wife and five kids, so he had a busy home life too. It said he got so sick from stress that all his hair fell out, and much of his life he wore wigs on his head. In later years, when he stepped back from making cash, his health improved. Once he had made his fortune, much of his time was dedicated to philanthropy, and he gave away a lot of cash to promote advances in medicine, science, education, and the arts. He created the Rockefeller Foundation in 1913, and it's said he put $250 million into that. He did this over a period of time, but if we see how much that's worth now, it's something like $60 billion, which is a fair bit of money to give away. He has always been a controversial figure, even if he did do his bit for the common good, with many of his detractors saying he was relentless and cruel, so greedy that he destroyed many on his way to dominance. Others say he had a good side, but we sometimes overlook that. As one writer said, what makes him problematic and why he continues to inspire ambivalent reactions is that his good side was every bit as good as his bad side was bad. Seldom has history produced such a contradictory figure. So how much did he have when he was at his richest? This is what the New York Times wrote in his obituary. It was estimated after Mr. Rockefeller retired from business that he had accumulated close to $1.5 billion out of the earnings of the Standard Oil Trust and out of his other investments. This was probably the greatest amount of wealth that any private citizen has ever been able to accumulate by his own efforts. So much of his cash was tied up and it's hard to say exactly how much he had. Still, at the time of his death, in 1937, some people estimate his fortune was about $402 billion in today's money. This was a significant slice of the US GDP and would make him the richest man that ever lived in modern times. Some sources, though, say he might have only accumulated around half of that amount. 
We'll now leave you with a poem he wrote when he was 86 years old. I was early taught to work as well as play. My life had been one long happy holiday. Full of work and full of play, I dropped the worry on the way. And God was good to me every day. While we don't totally disagree with the sentiment behind Mr. Rockefeller's poem, maybe it was a bit easier to be worry-free in the early 20th century before we were constantly faced with the threat of online attacks. It feels like every day our data is getting leaked or someone tries to access one of our accounts nefariously. What are we supposed to do about it? The answer is Dashlane, the one and only tool you need to stay safe online. With a VPN, password generator, and breach alerts for when websites you have logins for suffer breaches or hacks, Dashlane will actively work to protect you across all your devices and online accounts so you can get a little closer to that ideal life of no worries. Don't be like millions of victims every day. Get Dashlane and keep your digital life secure right now. Head on over to dashlane.com slash infographics for a free 30-day trial. And if you use the coupon code infographics, you can get 10% off a premium subscription today. What would you do with the equivalent of $400 billion? Buy your own island? What about an entire country? Tell us in the comments. Now go watch how Jeff Bezos gets his money from Amazon. Thanks for watching and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.